Hello. Thank you all for coming and thank you, Shaogo, for that wonderful story of uh, seafood gone wrong, <laughs> which we will all surely remember. Uh, I certainly will. So I'm going to do a few different things tonight. Um, the spookiest thing in the world, an Ed Sheeran medley. No, I'm just kidding. He's not here, is he? <laughs> uh, so tonight is actually the one year anniversary of um, my first poetry collection, Rope, which came out on Halloween last year. And uh, I wore a witch's hat that I just found last year, like a black witch's hat. And this year I decided to go silver, but I was not expecting Liberace. So <laughs> I, I quite enjoy this. <laughs> um, I'm going to read you a few poems from this first, and then a one-off poem from a new anthology that's just come out called Spells, and close with a, uh, my first book, Indigenous Species. So first, I'm going to read you a poem called Sakina. So, to preface this, um, I am from a culture called Minangkabau in Indonesia, West Sumatra, and it's the largest matrilineal culture in the world. Uh, but somehow growing up, all the myths I learned from Minang culture of women were of women as assassins. Like, I'm <laughs> just going back and like, she kills somebody, she, she kills somebody, she kills somebody. <laughs> so those were my role models. So Malin Kundang. <laughs> Malin Kundang is a Minang folk tale about an ungrateful son who returns from making his fortune and shuns his mother. This is all preface to this poem. As punishment, she turns him to stone. Sakina, the title of this poem, is, is taken from the title of a sculpture by Ahmad Osni Bey in Rimbundahan Art Center, Malaysia, who I reimagined as um, a petrified woman. Sakina. Where was Malin Kundang when you needed him for commiseration? Humans turned mineral artifacts proved difficult to come by around the Malacca Strait. You stand lofty in sun, jungle clearing. Yellow, pale daffodil where the light catches what would have been your shin, your knee. Visitors craned up at the curves of your now multiplied necklines during events, obliviously snapping photographs, ears silent to blatant screams. In time. You stop trying to be heard. What was your supposed sin? Vanity? Lust? Blood lust? A fetus inside you couldn't bear to hold? Were you too beautiful to have been truthful? Too trusting to imagine being a sculpture for the rest of your days? They never tell us that Malin Kundang had tried to reach his mother many times. It was she who first turned him away. In the night, frogs croak by your ankles. You hum a song for petrified aluminum. Uh, so this next one is called Large Canvas, and it was written for my friend Trandan, who enjoys frightening fellow artists. Uh, <laughs> who here has seen the movie The Babadook? The Australian film The Babadook, yeah. Freaky as hell, right? So. <laughs> I was at a residency, the same residency at Rimbundahan Art Center in Malaysia, that, where I saw Sakina, the sculpture. And uh, we had a Babadook screening in my house. And afterwards, my friend Tran Dan would make the Babadook sound outside my house at night, <laughs> which I did not appreciate at all. <laughs> so as revenge, I wrote him this poem. He's a painter. Large canvas. You are calm that these woods lack safety. Silver motifs and swaying cats, where are the parents? Human children easily sway themselves into the path where eyes are devoured by what's been brushstroked up in the leaves while you wait for each layer to dry. Tree spirits crawl thick into painted globules. Such representation is alchemy. Cursed potions, too, run chemical. Take two parts of advice with you in archipelagic old growth. One, my father taught us to speak upon entering a new hilly forest alone, an offering of assalamu alaikum. Peace be for the fanged ones Allah might set upon us. True story. I can't go into a forest without saying assalamu alaikum. A second warning. Repeat this 
when you lock up the studio for the night. There are ghosts for whom a gentle salutation might balm an urge to escape the cut of stretched out flats, to pull to the world you've created the cracks of all your fears. Lustrate the oils with voice. I hope that will spook him for life. <laughs> <laughs> Babadook voice. Okay. So this is a contemporary nightmare. Steal yourself. F train comes engorging fist first into the belly of the stoplight, blood from warm places, dripped on the platform and dried. Stoop, girl, that's red you remember and recognize from Friday. You packed a jam sandwich but won't get to eat it now. Just a few meters down and you're holding breath, solid, suspended vision, in a tunnel of piss, no rain, no sunlight, always 3 a.m. Mother's earrings you leave behind on the dresser in revised historical fantasy, rattling instead, clickety-coo, under rodents' feet, not so far from your own persistent ankles. This is another contemporary ghost story, but I wouldn't say a nightmare. Some ghosts are friendly. It's called The Closing of the Bones. In the houses they live in afterwards, there is the ghost of a framed shelter within the belly, one she'd laid pliantly to rest, to set things aloft, first setting them alight. This spirit rests with the olive oil on the kitchen counter, and sometimes with the spinach and sambal resting in the bowl painted hot with red birch trees and colored winds snaking double round them. Air fed with exhalations, the pair carry the bowl from rented vessel to rented vessel of their courtship made solid, like the promise of freedom, like a child they knew shouldn't want to be just yet. To live here now. Abortion ghost. <laughs> okay. That's for later. This is called Wednesday's Child. Little captain of my womb, she might have navigated the streams of becoming with claws and iron, held on with alabaster nails to the interstices of uterine walls. Pirate queen, small interlocutor of necessary things, my operatic diva of singing innards, a will I, won't I become. Impossible as break-ins through barricaded armada, as ocean captures of impenetrable raid ships. In the blink of both eyes, I did think her flesh could become as tactile and wet as fresh blood and salt water fish eyes and porridge. Your staying away was just as well. Ghost child felt all mine. May sunshine to be emerging from hips would have climbed to the bow of the ship, armed to the teeth with an animus of my making, and a dress wet gray from marine winds, kelp, crayfish shells culled from ominous straits, and loved me, told you, get gone. That was my Ursula from the Little Mermaid boy. <laughs> uh, last one from Rope. Tsunami Pilgrims. We seek out pain in lurid glimpses. Bent palm, shell from Lokna, where waves hit the treetops and deluge the cement plant. Near the leftward curve of the bay, a maroon ship's chemical bullion leaching out into the Indian. Did I sell these things in little jars? Hone memories, tongue wrapped for relatives, repasts, parsed words, and round vowels tasting like rawness and salt water. We wrap in plastic an oblong, displayed for the vendors a foible as goodness, and follow others' nightmares here to the sea. So, just recently come out is an anthology called Spells, 21st century occult poetry. It's out now with Ignota Press, new press. I'm very excited to be in it. It includes um, heroes of mine like Ursula Le Guin and uh, 
Dorothy Alaski, Kaba Akbar, C.A. Conrad, um, brilliant, brilliant, many, many brilliant poets. Um, and for this anthology, I decided to write about, who here has heard of Chani Nicholas? She is an astrologer. What? One person, yes? Yes. <laughs> yes, hardcore fan as soon as you know about her, right? Yes, Chani Nicholas is a feminist astrologer. And um, actually, I found out about Chani after watching the movie Get Out. Uh, <laughs> weirdly, my friends and I sat around at a kebab place uh, until the wee hours of the morning discussing Get Out as visual cultural researchers <laughs> tend to do. And um, we started, uh, my friend told me about Chani Nicholas and I'm a faithful reader and I uh, also have taken a, a few courses of hers, including the moon course, I'm a Libra moon, not relevant, but in any case. Um, so this poem is called What Chani Nicholas Told Me because basically I wrote her an email and I said, Chani, I was born with six planets retrograde. Woe is me, what is going to happen to my life? And she said, don't worry. Um, what Chani Nicholas told me. The morning my mother gave up on coaxing me out of her vagina, after nearly two days, consented to being cut open. I was born in a placement speaking to difficulty. Under the sun's beams, I plucked hymns from waiting in the warm amniotic sea, and no one was bearing me out unless my home was sliced in two. How I see Chani, astrologer bursting sun from her bare bones, human and emailing to help with a moon course. I don't crush a lot, just a player. The stars when I emerged close to the sun, Venus retrograde in Aries, 12th house. I hear from Chani difficulties here, fallen woman. Chani knows the term is archaic, gives its history for mystifying chart, points to feminist and creative wombs broken, bust open, diminished, disrespected, pushed, slapped red to no one's place like muscly hands. I know Chani, yeah, read me like the salvaged Medusa of nerves my body has become. She speaks of my birth placement as archetype, Venus conjunct sun, retrograde heart of second planet. Chani says, in the myth of Inanna, this is when she dies in the underworld and is reborn. Sometimes the river with its faint whiff of tombs, hand in its water, laughing back at able prisons, coming into a 33rd year of survivorship, counting from when they slit my belly sky roof and placed my heart like an offering to burn under sun's beams, ripping the Empyrean, befitting an epidermal ceiling I'd wanted to stay. My orbit of all things rebirths itself. Chani tells me how, but I am ready and already firmament heavy, beaming back at the burning gashes, mouth trying to be kind, fingers grasping from all my house placements, Taurus rising, half dead, half scorned, half electric, the bull a symbol of my mother's Minang house, our clan house back in the Tanah Datar village, its roof shaped as horns, my belly sky. Um, so, strange coincidences, I am Taurus rising and my clan animal is the bull and our clan house is shaped like bull's horns, so it all comes together. So now I'm going to read to you from my first book, Indigenous Species. Close your eyes, just for three seconds, and picture yourself on a boat on a river in a forest. Three, two, one. Okay, thank you. When you abduct me down the rotten river, you make sure to wrap some rope around the hull, lest the current get swept into dreaming and the dugout boat loses sight of carvings and knives for the vision of ancestor breath, calling us away from great hulks of islands and into water culled from the saliva of tigers whose bloodlines we clotted to death on Java, stabbed out of life on Bali. This is an illustrated book. It's a colonial photograph. Tigers being hunted to death. When you wrap chloroform in my mouth, we are drifting past open sores of forest, pestilent red wounds in the trunks exposing great, great 
grandmotherly rings, the circumferences it takes for rainforest to sprout its many legs of mystery, the soup of a complex resilience, rust bucket water feeding ferocity as green gasps wide and devours canopy, the crazy lush of it tickling away into the ocean. I would tell you this, but you are already knotting one of my ankles tight to the other. We once let the jungle whittle our lives down to habit. Forests sculpting foraging patterns, spice configurations in soups, longhouse architectural trends, how women live with bleeding, what we can't name our children, how we groom the pelt on our bodies, and develop philosophy so astonishing it will be studied by all of five anthropologists in one movie theater, frostbitten towns and far off lands, and drivers in cities, the factory built into ash, who wish they had more time to know. Alam takambang menjadi guru. That's a minang saying, nature as teacher and womb, zygote fraternal twin to sapling. When you divorce my arm from my thigh where it rests and pin it to my back in a lock of fingers, I am tempted to tell you how hungry it is making me to feel the tributary wash us in waves left to right. And I don't want to grow old as I paddle down river with the mercury beating down your synapses, eating at your unborn childlings while I close my eyes and look away and pretend girls my age don't live here and won't. You have blindfolded me, but I've been down here before. So I know how there are islands of roots to stand foot on, battling for space and historical worth in the eyes of the species we peacock ourselves to be, with rakshas gargantuan as ignorance, brute big as guilt, and delicate as bird song. Centrifugal humidity swirling into sweltering heat-soaked drenched evolution. Centipedes big as your forearm, orangutan carcass, the feast of this famine. Hard to tell from your silence where you're taking me, but I'm guessing it's loin deep in the place where they're collapsing entire cosmologies into pulp and paper. Where the length of time we can stay where we were bred before our stories turn into project and palm oil oozes away, shucking down like lightning the seconds before we leave because we have to. This is a lipstick made out of rainforest. I bet you from the raucous machinery I'm hearing and the smell of rashness that this is where the grease deals are siphoned into miners' food and where they are packing down eons of intricacies and strength from the forest to molecular form on a woman's lipstick bottle in Iowa. The likelihood a child will know not to generalize the word Dayak to one tribe, frittered down to cardboard boxes for the rubbish metropolis of Bantar Gabang outside Jakarta, where kids sift through the money of our haste and vomit and they smack their lips are you giving any time to the waves of energy I'm sending you from this internal monologue? I'm telling you, mister, don't mess with me. They used to breed tigons and ligers for show. Half orange stripes and half ruddy mane, they bred me the same. Savage savant prim primitive to the ends of my toenails, and so this hatred of wearing heels when they can't be run into the dirt, and that is the point to my thinking of feet. You're not listening to the sounds of my throat. And I'm getting thirsty on this canoe. In Gunung Halimun Salak National Park in 1990, they went on an expedition citing no conclusive evidence of Javanese tigers' persistent existence. But it is easy to dodge discovery by your murderers. Paw prints are easily disguised by species so few as to be sacred. That is the primordial cunning with which I will leave this vessel and report you to the corrupt authorities of my land. Because once upon a time in the century before this, my family lived with tigers who sprang alive from the girth of their own elongated island. Orang utan means human of the forest, and we sent tourists there to rape this species. I wish that I made that up. And this is the kind of anger I will take to slip through this panic and hone my instinct for city locations and relation to waters and not spend a second on the monster of a false sense of isolation because you see I know there are claws in me from the bullish deaths of millions of fanged things and the tangle of this decapitated place and I am never lost when I share an outrage you will find it difficult to imagine from behind any screen. When you sit on a slab of wood in a boat and realize what around you is telling people to get addicted to suicidal plunges, iming iming gateway handouts, undue heat. 
I'm of the same blood as the sanctioned mess of invasion that was Javanese transmigration, and I shampoo my hair with oil crafted from dead-end social experiments and gargantuan-scale domestication of hectares, cemeteries of growth, the bonfires of so many canines made lame. When I get away from you, I will have nightmares about menageries and teeth festering yellow in cages, the flesh of unidentifiable femurs and the fire, and I will apologize all the way home for pouring vapor and rot down the necks of Kalimantan and remember the excesses of forgetting the names of fauna while making tea, singing a song to my niece about dismemberment of fowl about the self-emulating pot. Potong bebe kang sa masati kuali no na minta dansa dansa empat kali. Jolting like a beast awake in the night with how nothing on a boat is solid when it rests on kidnap and the wrong kind of silk. Thank you.